بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته <تصفيق> Today we're reciting the last page of Surah Al-Anfal and inshallah from next week we will start Surah At-Tawbah. These are verses 70 to 75 of Surah Al-Anfal, 70 to 75, on page number 186. <coughs> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها النبي قل لمن في أيديكم من الأسرى إن يعلم الله في قلوبكم خيرا يؤتكم خيرا مما أخذ منكم ويغفر لكم والله غفور رحيم وإن يريدوا خيانتك فقد خانوا الله من قبل فأمكن منهم والله عليم حكيم إن الذين آمنوا وهاجروا وجاهدوا بأموالهم وأنفسهم في سبيل الله والذين آووا ونصروا أولئك بعضهم أولياء بعض والذين آمنوا ولم يهاجروا ما لكم من ولايتهم من شيء حتى يهاجروا وإن استنصروكم في الدين فعليكم النصر إلا على قوم بينكم وبينهم ميثاق والله بما تعملون بصير والذين كفروا بعضهم أولياء بعض إلا تفعلوا تكون فتنة في الأرض وفساد كبير والذين آمنوا وهاجروا وجاهدوا في سبيل الله والذين آووا ونصروا لهم مغفرة ورزق كريم والذين آمنوا من بعد وهاجروا وجاهدوا معكم فأولئك منكم وأولو الأرحام بعضكم أولى ببعض في كتاب الله إن الله بكل شيء عليم صدق الله العلي العظيم The verses are talking about the prisoners whom the Muslims had captured in the Battle of Badr. If you remember, they had killed 80 from the or 70 from their adversaries and they had captured 70 of them as well. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Muslims to address the prisoners. Sometimes when prisoners were acquired, they were um, freed of their own reconnaissance. For example, in the conquest of Mecca, the Prophet of Allah chose to free them all, the people of Mecca, without asking for anything in return. And Lady Zainab alayhi salam reminded Yazid in the court in Sham, when she called him Yabna Tulaqa, O sons of freed people. Sometimes a ransom was taken and therefore they were freed after the ransom was acquired. And this is what happened after the Battle of Badr. Um, and then sometimes they were kept, these prisoners. And they were kept within the Muslim lands, they were trained. And slowly as they appreciated the greatness of Islam, the beautiful words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they became believers, then they were freed. Now, when the prisoners were acquired from Badr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also gave a very simple law for the believers and said that these prisoners, if they ever were to become believers, 
then you must free them in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some of them, when they were acquired, they did not choose to become believers initially. So their family had to pay ransom. And as we saw yesterday, sometimes it was a thousand dirham, and sometimes it was up to four thousand dirham. In fact, in the books of history, we're told that some of the prisoners were far relatives of the Holy Prophet. Some of them were near relatives of the Holy Prophet. In the Battle of Badr, Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib, the uncle of the Prophet, was taken prisoner by the Muslims after the Battle of Badr. <clears throat> and therefore he had to pay the ransom money. And he furnished the ransom money. In fact, when he was supposed to pay the ransom money, some of the Muslims came up with a very bright idea. They said, he's the uncle of the Prophet, he's a relative of the Prophet, let's give him a discount. And the Prophet of Allah said, not a single dirham will be given in discount to them. Every dirham must be paid. This is not my personal property, this is the property of the believers. Okay? And then he paid, <clears throat> and then he became a believer. He saw a miracle of the Holy Prophet, he became a believer, and the money that was paid was given back to them. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal Nabi, O Prophet of God, قُلْ لِمَنْ فِي أَيْدِيكُمْ مِنَ الْأَسْرَى Tell the prisoners who are in your possession, إِنْ يَعْلَمِ اللَّهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ خَيْرًا If God knows of goodness in your heart. Here the commentators have said, goodness means faith, iman, islam, belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يُؤْتِكُمْ خَيْرًا مِمَّا أُخِذَ مِنْكُمْ He will give you something better than what was taken from you. What was taken from them? Ransom, the money was taken. What will be given to you? Jannah. Right? That's better than any amount of ransom that you might have paid. And He's going to forgive you. Imagine this. Imagine the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These prisoners are people who tortured the believers in Mecca. They plotted against the believers. They came out to fight against the believers. They fought against the believers. Now the believers have acquired them and they have authority over them. They have control over them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, on one hand, if you just say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, and you testify to the prophethood of the Prophet, you become a Muslim, you are free to go. Not only that, but if there is true faith in your heart, we're going to give you Jannah. We're going to forgive you. Can you imagine telling somebody that, look, I have plotted against you, I have stolen from you, I have hurt you, I have come to hurt you, now I'm fully under your control, I'm asking you to forgive me and to give me a lot of gifts. Who would agree to do that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala agrees to do that. Wallahu ghafoorur rahim, because God is all forgiving and all merciful. <clears throat> now this was a loophole, right? A get out of jail free card. Right? Very easy, you're a prisoner. Just say, Shadu Allah, 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 you are getting free. So the Muslims were worried. What if some people took advantage of this loophole? Today in the tax system, whenever the government introduces a loophole, you will see accountants exploiting the loophole to the maximum, right? What if somebody came and exploited that? They said, okay, we're becoming Muslims. And then once they become Muslims, then they hang around Medina for a short while, they find out what the Prophet of Allah is up to, then they go back to Mecca and tell the believers, this is what is happening in Medina. Then what should the believers do? So look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. He doesn't say if somebody comes and says, I want to become a Muslim, there's a probation period. First we're going to check you, go and check inside their houses. Are they saying salat to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are they doing their wudu properly? Or are they worshipping idols? Allah says there's no need to do that. Don't be suspicious of them. وَإِنْ يُرِيدُوا خِيَانَتَكَ If they wish to deceive you and to plot treason against you, then you don't have to do anything, believers. Right? Of course, you're careful of your own defenses, but let them know one thing. فَقَدْ خَانُوا اللَّهَ مِنْ قَبْلُ فَأَمْكَنَ مِنْهُمْ They already tried to do that when they came to Badr, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala overpowered them. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turned them into Prisoners in the hands of the believers. Wallahu alimun hakim. Very beautiful. Allah knows of your actions and He is wise in His actions as well. He is wise in His laws as well. 
ان الذين امنوا وهاجروا وجاهدوا باموالهم وانفسهم at the last few verses of surah al anfal are describing the category of the believers and there are three categories okay category number 1 the muhajirin category number 2 the ansar <coughs> category number 3 the seasonal believers the comfortable believers those in makkah they said ashhadu an la ilaha illallah we are believers we believe in the holy prophet then the prophet said let's go let's do hijra to medina they said ya rasul allah we have our businesses here ya rasul allah we have our families here ya rasul allah i have my home over here how can i migrate to medina right? so three categories of believers <clears throat> question number 1 what's the relationship between category 1 and category 2 Question number 2 what's the relationship between 1 2 and category 3 let's look at the verses inna alladhina amanu surely those who believed wa hajaru and they migrated wa jahadu and they struggled bi amwalihim wa anfusihim with their wealth and with their lives when they lived in mecca when they made that migration when they came to badr fi sabilillah in the way of allah that's category number One, all right. Category number two: Waladina awa wa nasaru, and as for those who gave refuge to them, awa means to give refuge to them. Wa nasaru and help them as well in their struggle. Ulaika baaduhum awliya u baad. Some of them are allies to others. They are protectors of others. They are guardians of others. They're supposed to support each other. <coughs> in fact, we're told in the early days of Islam. <coughs> When two people made the pact of ukhuwa when the ansar and the muhajirin made the pact of ukhuwa then your brother in faith with whom you made that pact also inherited from you as well This is what it meant with wilaya right they had, they are awliya meaning they inherit from each other it also seems that those who did not migrate but they were family but they remained in mecca they did not inherit from each other until they migrated then the inheritance came into place for it category 1 and 2 they are allies of each other what about 1 2 and 3 are they allies as well walladhina amanu as for those who believe walam yuhajiru but they did not migrate seasonal comfort believers right ma lakum min walayatihim min shay'in hatta yuhajiru No there is no alliance between you and them until they do hijra until they sacrifice something until they join you and stand stand shoulder to shoulder with you until they work with you in building a better society there is no such alliance right very beautiful verse of the quran right in our communities these are the kinds of alliances we want to build when we have people who come to our community doesn't matter whether they've been here for decades or they are new whether they are from uh, you know uh, they they're born canadians or they're immigrants right as long as they come in the community they volunteer they support they support financially they become part of the program they come and meet with you they help out wherever help is required there has to be a special bond between us they have certain rights over us regardless of how we identify them or we don't identify them the moment they have been a part of the community they come when volunteers are required they support financially they have certain rights over the believers what if though these people who didn't migrate they are being attacked they are um being mistreated then do the believers have to go out of their way to help them or not let's read wa in istansarukum and if they seek help from you for what reason fid dini to be able to practice their faith then do we have to help them or not the quran says it depends depends on what fa alaykum an nasr then you have to help them illa ala qaumin bainakum wa bainahum mithaq the tribe that is mistreating them do you have a treaty with the tribe do you not have a treaty with the tribe if you have a treaty with the tribe 
there is nothing you can do over here. Believers at that time were not expected to put their necks on the line for another group of believers who are not willing to migrate to Medina, who wanted to live a comfortable life. Right? Why? Because you have a treaty between yourself and that particular tribe. These treaties and agreements are very important. In the Hadith, we're told that believers are identified by how well they maintain their agreements and their pledges. Sometimes I do get asked, you know, we're living in Canada, <coughs> Do we have to follow the laws over here? Or we don't have to follow the laws over here? These are not the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, there is nothing binding upon us. When it's convenient for us, we'll follow. When it's not convenient for us, we will not follow the laws. This verse of the Quran is saying, treaties are binding upon you. When you have made a pledge to the state that you are going to follow the laws of the state when you came in, then you have to follow those laws. It is how your faith is going to be identified. Wallahu bima ta'amaluna basir. And God is looking at what you do. Walladina kafaru ba'aduhum awliya'u ba'ad. You have to be united in moments of difficulty. Right? Migrant or native. Refugee or not. This ethnicity or that ethnicity, new or old to the community, you have to be united. In fact, Sunni or Shia, there has to be unity. In fact, amongst the non-believers, there might be people who don't have enmity against Islam. They stand in solidarity with you. They support your right to practice your faith and to be free in that land. Well, then you have to be also united with them as well. Why? Because those who are against you, they are united. You look at the right-wing extremists today, don't think they all have one agenda. They have so many different agendas. They have so many different ideologies. But on this particular issue, they are all united. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا As for those who disbelieve, بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعَادُ Some of them have alliances with others. إِلَّا تَفْعَلُوهُ Unless you do the same, تَكُنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ تَكُنْ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَفَسَادٌ كَبِيرٌ There's going to be a great test for you on the land and there will be a great act of corruption as well. Next now. You know, in every <coughs> nation, people are proud of that nation, right? For example, people say, I'm Canadian, I'm American, I'm British. And then some people will say, well, I'm more Canadian, I'm more American, I'm very patriotic. Well, how are you patriotic? I have a flag outside my house. Every July 1st, I do go for the parade that's there. That's my sign of patriotism. Elections come about, I go and vote in the elections. No, in fact, I go and help out when they are having elections. That's a sign of my patriotism. That makes me Canadian, for example. All right. Question, what makes you Muslim? Is it enough to wear the flag of Islam, to have the name of Islam, to know the anthem of Islam? What makes you a true Muslim, loyal to Islam? Okay, let's read. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا As for those who believe. And not only that. وَهَاجَرُوا And they are willing to migrate. Sometimes you migrate from one place to another. Sometimes you migrate from one lifestyle into another lifestyle for the sake of Islam. You let go of comfort. You let go of convenience. Wajahadu and they struggle. Fi awaw and those who are willing to provide refuge to them. Wanasaru and they are willing to help as well in building a better society. Ulaika humul mu'minuna haqqa. They are the true believers. They are the loyal believers. لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَرِزْقٌ كَرِيمٌ For them is maghfirah and for them is an honorable provision. What, if, what about those people who migrated from Mecca to Medina after the battle of Badr? The muhajirin and the ansar, risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and maghfirah from Allah. مُؤْمِنُونَ حَقَّ The true believers. Okay, what about those who came late? They came after the victory. Right? They're like, oh my God, the believers are now you know, gaining in strength. We should go and join them. 
are they also considered to be believers? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Come early or come late, we still accept you in the folds of the believers, right? Sometimes a person, it takes him time to realize the truth. But as long as he does that before the time is up, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts it. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا As for those who believe, مِنْ بَعْدُ Afterwards, وَهَاجِرُوا And they migrate afterwards, وَجَاهَدُوا And they stand shoulder to shoulder in solidarity with you, مَعَكُمْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مِنْكُمْ And they are also considered a part of you. وَأُولُوا الْأَرْحَامِ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلَى بِبَعْضٍ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ Now looking at the laws of inheritance in particular, Allah says yes, <coughs> in that time, you make a bond of brotherhood with them, they inherit from you. But your family members who are believers, who have migrated, then they will inherit even more from you. Those of the family have a greater right over you. Not just in inheritance, but even when it comes to help. You have sadaqah, for example, and you know somebody in your family is in need of it, right? They have a greater right over that sadaqah than somebody outside the family. Your neighbor needs it. He has a greater right on that sadaqah than somebody who is further away from you. In Allah bi kulli shay'in alim, God is aware of all things. He is aware of all the laws that He has explained for you in Surah Al Anfal. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allah.